In this presentation, I'll show you how to set up your Leica Captivate Simulator. The version I'll be using for this presentation is, is version 3.71. I have installed the simulator on my computer. I typically use the uh, Toll Station Simulator because this gives me the ability to simulate measurements so that I can learn more effectively how to use the program. So when you get the simulator, it will be basically devoid of um, coordinate systems, GOE models, uh, format files, or anything of that nature. So we need to go ahead and set this up so that we can utilize it. Now, the nice thing about the simulator is, is that I can load up uh, my data from my Captivate field controllers and actually use the simulator to do exports, to do transformations, and, and learn how to better use the equipment. So what I've done on my computer is I have set up a quick link to the folder structure for the simulator. When you install the, the simulator by default, it will place the, the folders on under your public drive, under your user. And in this case, I have both a total station and a data collector simulator. So under the total station, I will open that up and you'll see the directory structures. And so what I've done is I have placed several items on the USB memory device. Again, if you notice when I open this up, this will look just like um, a USB memory device that you would place in your controller in the field. Uh, we automatically create several directories on your USB and we use these to transfer data back and forth from your field controller uh, to the office uh, or to the memory device that you've chosen. Uh, in this case, I'm going to load um, coordinate systems geoid models and I have some export format files and style sheets that I like to use depending on what I've done in the field and a code list. So if you if you'll notice here if I select my code list I have uh, my database files from my code list. If I go to the convert directory you'll see several different uh, options for format files and style sheets. If we go to our dbx directory, you'll notice a file called trfset.dat. This contains the coordinate systems. I have exported all the coordinate systems for the region in which I work from Leica Infinity. Uh, if you have a current version of Leica Infinity with your CCPs up to date, you will be able to use the localization tool in Leica Infinity to create the different uh, coordinate systems for the area that you're going to work in. And then finally, I have taken the GOE models that I'm going to be using for the area that I survey in, and I have placed them in the data directory under GPS, GEOID. And you'll see here that I have GEOID models for Kentucky, Maryland. I have a, a GEOID model for just the region that I'm working in that I can use in association with the WGS84 coordinate system. I also have Virginia and West Virginia GEOIDs, and these are GEOID 12Bs. These can also be downloaded from your Infinity software. And just remember that you want to place those in the data backslash GPS backslash G geoid directory. So I'm now ready to take this information and import it into my simulator. So I'll shut this down, go back to my simulator. And the way we do this, be just like you would do it in the field. We'll go to settings, tools, transfer user objects. I can set this to all objects and I can select my USB drives and, I, and transfer from the USB to the internal memory. I typically don't do that so what I'll do is first I will go to my code list. Again I'm going to go from USB to internal memory. Uh, this, is, uh, this always defaults to a none code list even though we know that there is one on the USB drive so I can select that and I can press OK to transfer that. Now it's going to tell me it's already there. Do I want to overwrite it? In this case, I can say yes. And it comes up. It'll always come up after each transfer and, and ask if you want to transfer more data. I'll say yes. Go to the next screen. We'll set this to a format file. Again, we're going to go from the USB to the internal memory. I know that there are several format files on my uh, uh, on my USB drive and so I will tell it to transfer all of the selected type.
And yes, I'm just going to overwrite all. My transfer is successfully complete. Do I wish to transfer more information? I would say yes. Uh, and I, you know, I just kind of systematically walk, walk down the list. So the next option is geoid field files. Again, I know that there are several on my list that I want to transfer. So I would select uh, transfer all objects of the selected type, press OK. And again, just you can overwrite what's there. Set transfer is successfully complete. And then the last thing I would do here, actually I didn't do those in order, is my coordinate system. And again, same deal. We have several coordinate systems on our USB drive. We can transfer all, press OK. And in this case, uh, it didn't ask about overwriting. That's OK. It just updated what was there. And we'll press OK. And so we're now ready to use our simulator. Uh, one other thing I would point out, if you do want to utilize your simulator to look at or evaluate data that's coming from your field, what you can do is you can ask your field personnel to transfer the job. So to do that, we're going to transfer the job. And to do that, you click on the job, go transfer job. We're going to go from the SD card to the USB. Press OK. You can now look at that. And you'll now see my 1901 Bag Mountain Road job here on my USB drive. So if, you date, if your field crew collects data in the field and they send it to the USB drive, all you really have to do to utilize this in the simulator is copy this entire folder, find the storage location of your simulator on your PC, and copy this whole folder into the DBX directory. Now do that with the simulator turned off. And then when you turn the simulator back on, that job will be present. You, you have the ability to use that.